hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. These things we pray in Jesus' name. The Holy One of Israel, the Mighty One of Jacob, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. Scripture reading is Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and moral to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall, by, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst with new wine. Once again, the, the scripture reading was Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here. In the name of Jesus. So we got a little technical difficulties trying to work it out. We're going to eventually get rid of this streaming program that we got because it ain't worth two cents. But it costs a lot more than two cents. So uh, we're doing a little makeshift tonight. And uh, we don't even have a lesson hand out because there's something going on too with that. So don't nobody really know. I don't even have a lesson. I know I had one on my phone. And, and uh, that's being used to go to uh, Facebook. So I'm going to do a little maneuvering to get it. But we dealing with basically what the Bible talk about whisper. And from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it, it discusses that, and that seems like a, 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 you know, a real little thing, somebody that's whispering something, but according to the Bible, that turns into a big thing. That is a big thing. It's just like one of the Ten Commandments is, thou shall not bear false witness. So that's something that you just do simply with your mouth. You don't have to get up and slap nobody. You don't have to kill nobody. You don't have to take nothing from nobody. Only thing you do is use your mouth to get in trouble with God. And that's why sometimes we have lessons like that for the kids. So, you know, hey, a, a child, a, a six-year-old might not be able to kill nobody, but they can show lie on somebody. They can show use their mouth the wrong way. So that's something that is real easy to do. It's real easy to do. Use your mouth the wrong way. So we're going to get into it. And that's the title. I think that's the title. The Secret Whisperer. I think somebody told me it's a TV show called The Ghost Whisperer. Well, it's The Secret Whisperer. And that's usually the way it is when somebody is trying to put somebody down or deal with somebody. They are 
telling and revealing secrets. Don't nobody know, but they know something don't nobody know, and they letting other people know. And that's a problem in the Bible, because the Bible lets you know even if somebody was wrong. We're going to read something Job said at some point in the lesson. We only got 12 scriptures, even though I don't have my lesson here. I do know that it's 12 scriptures, 50-some verses. But we're going to read Job, and Job's friends came to him and just outright started accusing him, accusing him of having committed some sin for all the atrocities that happened to him. Had to be something he did. But Job told him something. Job said, look, even if I have sinned, you don't know nothing about it. You, you, you swinging in the wind. This is my words, of course. You don't know nothing about it. So if I have sinned, my sin remaining with me. So, so the point is, even if somebody have sinned, that don't have to be spread to everybody when don't nobody know. It's unnecessary to spread it to people for what reason? It's unnecessary in, in many cases. Now, if somebody else is being affected by it, it might be a reason to, but in, in that case, you're going to deal with the person who has, who has sinned. You're still going to deal with the individual. You know, they had a brother, suppose, been doing some dirt, doing some dirt to people, and uh, so it came to me, it wasn't even in, in our congregation, but it was, you know, among brothers and sisters that still supposed to believe. So this brother supposed that did some dirt to some people, got them for some money or whatever, and then people was, you know, they was kind of like, yeah, you know, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did this. Well, hey. Looked like he might still be trying to do other people. So, hey, I took it straight to him and said, hey, look, so and so, you doing so and so? And, hey, put him on front street in front of people because, hey, that's a situation where, hey, somebody else might get hurt. But I still didn't just whisper it to nobody because it was, it was told to me under wraps. But I took it directly and said, man, you doing so and so, so and so? Oh, no. He, he tried to play it off. But then all the witnesses came out. He disappeared. But my, my point was I didn't want to see him take advantage of nobody else. So it's a way to handle things. And the Lord tell you that. He said open rebuke is better than secret love. So, but somebody that's always got a secret to tell, that's the title, the secret whisperer, hey, they ain't trying to help nothing. They ain't trying to solve nothing. They trying to call themselves, put somebody down, make somebody look bad for whatever reason. Then a lot of people take that and run with it. They quote it. They quote what's being told. They don't know where stuff is true or false. They run with stuff. And that shows you a lot of people ignorantly bear false witness. A lot of people ignorantly, they don't even know but they spread something they heard from somebody else. And they might think that person is credible, but they still don't have no proof of the incident. So you just got to learn how to handle situations. I've had people tell me stuff, hey, I ain't going to look at the person no different whatsoever because if the Lord don't reveal it where it come all the way out, hey, I'm not even worried about it. The Lord going to handle that. That is the Lord's will. And that's kind of what Job was saying. We're going to get to that later on, Job 19. We might get some lessons uh, handed out eventually. But that's the title, The Secret Whisperer. The Secret Whisperer. And we're going to start off in 2 Corinthians 12, just to show you, because, again, we got a lot of New Testament people that say they believe in the New Testament. And they have been made to believe that you don't have any responsibility to God anymore once Jesus died. Jesus died. He saved us from our sins. We ain't got to worry about being obedient, keeping no law. He did away with all that. That's not the case. And this is proof that it's not the case because, because even something as simple as whispering something, that's as basic as, as it gets. Whispering something is can get you in trouble with the Lord. 
And this from the New Testament. He's, he's referring to this. Not just one place. We can read about it repeatedly. That's how you know something is important to God when you can read about it all over the Bible. 2 Corinthians 12, one verse. We're just going to read one verse right here. Verse 20. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 20. Go ahead, read it. For I fear that when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and they I shall find, and they I shall be, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not. Okay, so what he's saying, Paul is saying, when I get over to see you all, because you know they was had, traveling wasn't easy like it is for us. It took him a long time, but he would write letters to to these different people. So he said, I fear less when I come, when I make it over there to see you. I shall find you such as I, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not. In other words, he's, he's letting these Corinthians know, you know, when I come over there, if I see a whole lot of sinful stuff going on, you all out of pocket, that means I'm going to find you such as I would not, and then I'm going to have to address that, I'm going to have to deal with that, and you, you know, I'm going to get ugly. You're going to be doing ugly. I'm going to get ugly with you is really what he's saying. I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not. Go ahead. Lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, uh -huh. backbitings, whisperings, mm -hmm. swellings, tumults. Okay, so a whole lot of evil, sinful attributes. He said, lest I find you caught up in all of these things. What did he say? Debates. A lot of times people want to debate just to debate, not to solve nothing, just to debate. Debates, backbitings, envies, wrath. See, this is stuff that people in church, he's talking to people that are supposed to be in church knowing God. This is stuff that we have to beware of that we don't get hung up on and caught up on. Wrath, strifes, backbitings. But then the, 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 the point that we make in the night, whisperers, even that, a bunch of whispering going on, you know, so and so, just a bunch of mess. Don't add up to nothing. Whispering swellings, being puffed up, tumults, all kind of issues going on. He said, look, I hope for your sake, when I come, I don't find you caught up in a lot of, the, a lot of this, these things because I'm going to have to address it. And that's just the way it is. And it's not even personal with somebody that serves God. It's just business. That's why when you learn, when you serve in God, hey, some things, hey, it, it, it's not personal where you just get so upset and bent out of shape. It's just business that got to be dealt with. Romans 1. Romans, the first chapter. And we will read one verse here. Romans 1, and we're going to read 29. Romans 1, I was going to do a lesson on Israel, but decided to do this at the last minute. As usual, Romans, the first chapter. So as people say, hey, maybe somebody need this. Because I sure had plans, even had it out, laid out that I was going to do a lesson dealing with Israel being cursed a little bit, but still chosen. And I already had plans to do another lesson tomorrow, which, hey, that could change on uh, dealing with how the Gentiles get, get added to uh, Israel because it's, it's, it's teaching. A lot of Israelites teach that, um, you know, no Gentiles can be saved. That's, that's one false doctrine that some Israelite brothers got, that Gentiles can't be saved. Other nations, period. Only Israel can be saved. So, and along with that teaching, they say that, uh, you know, the people in the New Testament, these are New Testament, brothers say they believe in the New Testament, so they had to switch it and say the people in the New Testament wasn't really Gentiles. 
that Paul was preaching to, like the Corinthians we just read here, we're going to read some in Romans 1, that these were not Gentiles, that these were Israelites that they were talking to, which never made much sense to me, but uh, that's the doctrine they teach, but now I hear that it's, some, it's a little different spin on it, that they saying, well, they wasn't Israelites, even though Gentiles can be saved, but they wasn't Gentiles, they were Israelites still. So this is a different spin I heard, so that's Lord willing, we're going to get to that tomorrow. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to do two things dealing with physical, physical kind of nationhood. But now, Romans 1 and verse 29. Romans 1 and verse 29. Read that. Being filled with all unrighteousness, Uh fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, Debate, uh-huh. deceit, malignity, whisperers. So he said the same thing here. He said being filled with all of this evil and wickedness, being filled with all of this sinful ways, unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, all this stuff is, we know it's sinful. And again, if we're not supposed to, we're about keeping no commandments while we're reading this in the New Testament. Full of envy, murder, debate, d- deceit, malignity, and last but not least, he says, whisperers. Just a whole bunch of whispering going on. Saying this about somebody, whispering this. <clears throat> and that, that can get so bad That can get so bad, don't nobody know what the heck is going on. People be, end up joining, like in the Bible sometimes, they was joining group, some type of protest on some, people out protesting, don't even know what they protesting. Because somebody then whispered some secrets around and and now everybody is up in arms, but don't even know what they up in arms about. Don't even know. That's why the Lord say, don't follow a multitude to commit sin. So, but this is real basic. We talking about just whispering. Just whispering. Let's go back to the New Testament. Go to Proverbs, the 16th chapter. Proverbs, the 16th chapter. Proverbs 16. And we're going to read one verse. Proverbs 16, and we're going to read this one verse, verse 28. Proverbs 16, read that verse, verse 28. Go ahead, read it. A forward man soweth strife, uh-huh. and a whisperer separateth chief friends. Okay, so now he, he get into a point blank. Solomon is, he said, a, a forward man soweth strife. He said he going to sow some strife because that's what his mind is, is bent on. He said, a forward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separated chief friends. Friends, that's how bad it can get because don't nobody know what's going on because they whispering it behind closed doors. And next thing you know, people are enemies, but they don't even know why. Because somebody then whispered something to somebody or, or multiple people in some cases. And it just spread. Then it get to somebody else and it spread. Yeah, you know so-and-so. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. And next thing you know, it spread. Now, People are enemies for no good reason. So this is what he's talking about. This, and this is people, he's talking to people that's supposed to know better and that's supposed to know God. That's who he's talking to. And I've seen people in the Word, people been in the Word for years doing that. Not, and it don't even have to be nothing so great. I, I had a brother tell me, he was telling me about you know, we got different congregations. He was telling me about another congregation, you know, and he said, yeah. He said, yeah, you know, they over there, they over there doing so-and-so. They, they, they sinning. You know, they over there sinning. And I looked at that brother. 
And this respected brother, you know, I said, no, they not. But he said it to me because that's how, hey, sometimes you don't know you be talking to the wrong person. And maybe somebody else might have not said nothing. They might have just nodded their head. I said, no, they not. I haven't been over there. I didn't see it. They, they ain't doing, they not doing that. Oh, oh, well, that's good to know. Well, what the, why would you even say that? And if you tell me that, I know you probably telling somebody else the same thing. And then what made it kind of bad is that I talked to the brother maybe two, three weeks later. He said the same thing. He forgot he told me that. I said, I told you that a few weeks ago. That ain't true. I don't know why you repeat that. I told you it is not true. But evidently he forgot. But if I don't know no better or just say I didn't have the insight and I start rolling with that, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, yeah. Then I tell him and now it's, 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 it's running rampant. Yeah, you know so-and-so, that's what they doing. But it wasn't even true. I knew it wasn't true. Because what he was talking about, I was, I was witnessing. It was like, no, they, they not doing that. Uh-uh. So, but that's how it can get out of hand. So this is what he said. A forward man soweth strife. He's sowing strife. Not trying to solve nothing or fix nothing. Because sometimes it's just good to keep your mouth shut. Even if you know something. Even if it is true. Sometimes it's still good to keep your mouth shut. Because it's not going to benefit nobody. It's not getting ready to help nobody. So he said, a forward man. That means he's on some, he's on some destruction. He said, he's so of strife and a whisperer separated chief. You know, chief friends, that is the best of friends. You talk about, you know, now they got the saying BFF. You know, this is BFF for real, friends. We'll, we'll have them mad at each other when it shouldn't be. But that's the title, The Secret Whisperer. Because it's always a, a secret that they tell him. And nine out of ten is wrong. But like I said, sometimes it can be right. It don't even need to be repeated. It don't even need to be spread because what are you getting out of it? What's the purpose of it? You know, I know a secret about this brother, and it could be true, but it don't benefit me or nobody for me to tell this brother. It don't benefit nobody. I'm just going to tell him just because so, I show I know some or nine out of ten to make him look bad. Yeah, you know, Jeff, man, I tell you about him, man. I got to tell you something about Jeff. It, it's it's useless unless I'm trying to stir something up behind the scenes. That's why it's not good to buy into that. That's why the Lord tell you. That's why when the brother told me something supposed to be wrong, I mean, he wasn't trying to, I guess he was just putting it out there. Hey, I wasn't going to just let him say it and get away with it. Let's go to Proverbs 25, though, because it's a way to handle things that's an issue anyway. If it's a real issue, it is a way to handle it. Proverbs 25. And the Lord give you the remedy for issues. But if you're just trying to sow discord and put somebody down, you'll be saying, all, you'll be saying stuff. Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25, we'll pick it up at verse 8. Proverbs 25, verse 8. Go. Go not forth hastily to strive, uh -huh. lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof. See, he said, don't go forth hastily to strive. See, that's why it's good to approach matters, you know, sensibly. Don't go forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof. When what? When thy neighbor have put thee to shame. When thy neighbor have put thee to shame. And that's why I've had to catch myself a time or two, ready to, you know, jump on somebody. Because that's not, you know, the Lord talk about anger and all that. He said anger rests in the bosom of food. But we all could get angry. And the Bible lets you know we get angry. But the Bible said, be ye angry and sin not. So I've been in that situation, ready to jump on somebody because I, I knew they had did something wrong. I just know they didn't 
been, you know, bogus. So, but I, I have caught myself in, in, in situations like that where I'm ready and, and, th- and that's why you need to take your time before, like he's saying here, before you jump into something, call yourself going off on somebody. You need to take your time and approach that a little more gingerly. Because I, I found out, I mean, I just know something is a certain way, but I still don't have the evidence. But from what it appears, yeah, it was this way. And when I see this brother, I am going to tear his head off verbally. But then come to find out, some time went by and before I saw him, I found out it wasn't what I thought. So now, good thing I hadn't seen him before I, I got the information. Because if I'd have saw him, then I would have been wrong. But now I was like, oh, goodness, I'm glad I didn't, you know, approach it like I was getting ready to. But this is what he's saying. Go now forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof when thy neighbor have put thee to shame. And that's really what your neighbor should do. Like I said, somebody come to me with some, especially about somebody else and you ain't trying to really correct nothing. You're just trying to speak down about somebody. You're just trying to put somebody down. Look, I don't, I don't take kindly to that because I know you'd be talking to somebody else trying to put me down, which don't really matter. But still, I don't take kindly to that because it don't make no sense. That's why he say, lest you, your neighbor and put you to shame. Verse 9. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself uh-huh. and discover not a secret to another. Oh, de- this is how you handle it. Debate your cause with your neighbor himself. If there's a cause, if there's a reason, if there's a problem, if there's an issue, deal with it with your neighbor. So if I really had an issue with Brother Jeff, then that's what I need to talk to. I don't need to be telling that brother about Brother Jeff. I need to be talking to him. Say, look, I got an issue. We need to discuss it and deal with it. And then we can hopefully, if it's an issue, we can get past it. But sometimes people not trying to solve no issue. They just trying to make somebody look bad for one reason or another. One reason or another. They tell somebody, next thing you know, 15 people looking at Jeff funny. And they don't even know What's going on? They just heard it from somebody else. And then, you know, when it spread, it, it, it changes tunes as it spread. Before you know it, it'd be a whole new story. But this is why he said, do it this way. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. That's why the title is The Secret Whisperer. That's exactly what they discovering to people. They say, see, don't nobody know about this, but I'm going to tell you. And nine out of ten, they, gonna, they, they say, don't tell nobody. They're going to tell somebody anyway because Israel can't keep quiet about much. That's what Moses had to get the heck out of Egypt, he found out. He killed the Egyptian. It, Egyptian was doing an Israelite wrong. Moses stuck up and killed him, thought it was a secret, and the very next day, he seen two Israelites arguing, and he tra- trying to stop them from arguing, and one of them busts out, who you think you is? What you going to do, kill me like you did that Egyptian? Moses was like, good. <laughs> that did spread like that already? Moses was like, man, everybody know this. I got to get out of the, the... And that's the, thing about, that's the thing about secrets anyway, and that's why you ain't really got to be trying to spread nothing Because the Lord said what's done in the dark going to come to the light anyway. The Lord said that. So if I know a secret about somebody and it, you know, I don't have to be worried about trying to let somebody know or spread it to try to put the person out. If the Lord wants that out, the Lord going to handle that. The Lord going to deal with it. So I need to be able to wait on the Lord on that anyway. But go ahead, verse uh, 10. You read that? Verse 10. Go ahead. Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, Uh and thine infamy turn not away. He said, 
Debate that cause thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame and thy infamy, infamy turn not away. Because you wasn't trying to solve the issue, you was trying to just make it worse or just discredit somebody. Judges 9. We're going to look at a quick example of that. We're going to look at a quick example. It's actually similar to what that scripture just said. You know, this individual, this brother is going to discover a secret to somebody, well, whatever. He's he going he to deal with his issue, and he's dealing with his issue with somebody that he had with somebody else with some other people. He's discussing and he's going over it. But the other people, not there. But he, you know, he putting it out there. He got an issue with these people. And because that's, that's what happened a lot of times. We will be putting issues out about somebody else because we want to put them down and make ourselves look better. Make ourselves look bigger. Like we somebody. That's what we'll do. That's, that's what flesh do. But when you come to serve the Lord, you're going to get out of those fleshly ways. That's why he kept saying repeatedly in the New Testament, don't get caught up in all this malignity, debate, whispers. He keeps saying that. Just something simple like you just whispering something about somebody. So we had Judges 9 and 26. Go ahead, read it. And Gael, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. Mm -hmm. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. Okay, so this is before, of course, Israel didn't have a king yet. Saul was the first king officially. And then it went on from there. But before they had a, a king officially, they had different leaders, different judges. So this is during that season. So this guy, Gael, the son of Ebed, he said he came with his brother and he went over to Shechem and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. Go ahead, 27. And they went out into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trolled the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God mm -hmm. and did eat and drink and cursed Abimelech. Okay, so now, so now Abimelech was, was, the, was the power but he's not around. You can't be in every place at one time. So he's not around. So these guys, they want to run things. So it say they, they came and they went and start uh, drinking. It said in the house of their God, they did eat and drink, and they cursed Abimelech. Now, Abimelech not there, of course, but go ahead, verse uh, 28. And Gael, the son of Ebed, said, who is Abimelech and who is Shechem that we should serve him? Okay, so now he said, who is Abimelech and who is Shechem that we should serve him? Because Abimelech, he been running it. And regardless of whatever Abimelech is, hey, he not there at this point and the guy is trying to rise up on him. Because, you know, you read, you read the scripture, hey, Abimelech, hey, he wasn't nothing nice either. And we're going to find that out. But go ahead. Is he not the son of Jerubel? Mm -hmm. And Zebul, his officer, mm -hmm. served the men of Hamar, mm -hmm. the father of Shechem. Go ahead. For why should we serve him? And would to God this people were under my hand. Uh -huh. Then would I remove Abimelech. Uh -huh. And he said to Abimelech, increase thine army and come out. Okay, so now, you know, uh, so he, he, he want to replace Abimelech, really, is what he want to do. He want to replace Abimelech. But the only issue is he, he discovering all this stuff. He doing, he doing a lot of talking. Abimelech not there. Abimelech, he say, sound like Abimelech that time. Like Abimelech come out, but he not nowhere around. So that's what he said. He said, look, I wish that I was ruling. Because basically Abimelech don't know what he doing. Would to God this people were under my hand, he said. Then I would remove. Abimelech, and he said to Abimelech, he said to Abimelech, 
Now, he said it, but he ain't saying it to Abimelech because Abimelech not there. But this is the way he talking. You know, we talk like that too. Yeah, let him, let him come over and do something. You want to do something, let him come over here. So this is what he's saying. So he like he talking to Abimelech, but he know good, good and well Abimelech can't hear him because Abimelech is not around. So he said to Abimelech, increase your army and come out. Now this is in ancient times. They ain't, they ain't even got no, you know, they, they ain't got no uh, telephones or nothing like that. He can be talking long distance. So, but go ahead, verse 30. And when Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Ebed, his anger was kindled. Hey, but somebody heard it. It's like, man, this dude talking. But remember what the Bible said. Hey, don't discover a secret to another. Hey, debate your cause with the one you got a problem with in the first place. Hey, go locate Abimelech and address him and deal with him like that. So he doing all this talking, but the, only, the one that heard him was this guy, Zebo. Zebo heard him. And when he heard him, he was mad because he's like, this, this, this dude got a lot of nerve. He's doing all this talking. But again, he ain't, trying, he ain't trying to do nothing but come up himself. He want to come up and he want to talk Abimelech down. He don't look like he's ready to knock him down because he would have went and knocked him down. But he wanted to talk him down. And, but he said, he did say, increase your army and come on out. Go ahead. 31. Mm -hmm. And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privately, saying. Uh -huh. Now, this is, Zebo did this. Zebo, when he heard it, because Gael doing this talking, but, you know, he ain't doing nothing. But Zebo, he sent some messages to Abimelech privately, saying what? Behold, Gael, the son of Ebed, and his brethren be come to Shechem. And behold, they fortify the city against thee. He said, look, they trying to take over. So I'm just putting you on notice. Go ahead. Now, therefore, up by night, thou and the people that is with thee, and lie in wait in the field. Uh-huh. And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early and set upon the city. Mm -hmm. And behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, then mayest thou do to them as thou shalt find occasion. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And Abimelech rose up, and all the people that were with him by night, uh -huh. and they laid wait against, she against Shechem in four companies. Okay, so now they wasn't that far off. And, and basically, they doing what the guy said. The dude said, increase your army. And let's, let's get out. That's what he told him. So, but he didn't think he was going to hear it. <laughs> he didn't know that somebody was going to send him a message. But go ahead. And Gael, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entering of the gate uh -huh. of the city. Because he's trying to take over on the slide. But go ahead. And Abimelech rose up and the people that were with him from lying in wait. Uh -huh. And when Gael saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. Mm -hmm. Zebo said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains as, as if they were men. Okay, so now, Gael said, he, he, he saw Abimelech and his, and, his, and his people coming, but they so far off, he's not sure. He said, man, I see some people coming. He telling the guy that then already blew the whistle on him. Zebo, he said, it's, it's some people coming over by the mountains. And he tried to play it off. He said, no, nah, you see the shadow, man. You think it looks men. It's the shadow. 37. And Gael spoke again and said, see, there come people down by the middle of the land. Uh -huh. And another company come along by the plain of Manil. He said, man, I see some people coming, more than one company coming. Now, I know they coming. Verse 38. Then says Zibal unto him, where is now thy mouth? Now, this, this cracks me up every time I read it. Because the dude was doing all that talking. So now Zebo bust him out. He said, where's now your mouth? Where your mouth at now? Where with what? Where was thou saidest, who is Abimelech? Uh-huh. And that we should serve him. Mm -hmm. Is not this people that thou hast despised? Uh-huh. Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. He said, this the one you've been talking about. Go, go deal with him. Go ahead. And Gael went out before the men of Shechem mm -hmm. and fought with Abimelech. Okay, but he had no choice at this point because he didn't put his foot in his mouth. So he did go out. At least he did do that and then just run straight away. But he's going to run anyway. 
He said he went out before the men of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. Go ahead. And Abimelech chased him. And Abimelech chased him. Now, all this happened because he running his mouth doing all that talking. Even if he didn't have to do all that. That was unnecessary. And one thing about it, Abimelech wasn't nowhere on the scene. And he doing all this talking on Abimelech. Unnecessary. But somebody ended up reporting it back, which is really what he seemed like he wanted, but evidently he didn't want it. Like people say now, that ain't what you want. That wasn't what he wanted. But he said it. He said, tell him, if Bimelech increase your own. Well, he come out with four companies. He did exactly that. He come out with four companies. And it said, Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him. Go ahead. And he fled before him, and many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. And many got overthrown, overthrown and wounded. But now, flip over to uh, Psalm 131. Psalm 131. So that's a good example, brothers and sisters, like it said. Hey, you, if you got an issue with somebody, which that's a whole nother thing we was just reading, but he did have an issue, hey, you just deal with them. And that's really what happened according to that scripture. Hey, he was talking all that stuff, and Zebo heard him, and Zebo put him to shame. How Zebo put him to shame? He's like, look, this is what you want? Okay, I'm going to call Abimelech, and we're going to see. And that's why he said at the end of the day, well, where's your mouth at now? You, you worried about seeing some people coming? Yeah, that's the ones you was asking for. Psalm 131. But it just shows you sometimes with certain things that we don't understand and know, we can get out, we can get out our league with it. And he kind of tells you that right here. It's just like sometimes... It could be a situation. Some people say, well, I don't, I don't, this is a tough situation. I don't know what to do, but they still try to do something. They still try to do something. They don't know what they're doing. And then that can make matters worse. Like I say, even just, you know, you might know something or heard something about somebody. Hey, just keep that to yourself. Because if, if it needs to be dealt with, it's going to be dealt with. Psalm 131, this, he kind of giving you a little insight on something here. 131 and 1, read it. Lord, my heart is not haughty, uh -huh. nor mine eyes lofty. Go ahead. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. He said, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. And this is what will be the issue, brothers and sisters, a lot of times when people are tail-bearing, you know, telling secrets, putting other people down just constantly. Want to debate, want to be, want to have an issue. This is what the issue, the real issue is. People get, as he said, swellings, people get puffed up. We get puffed up easy. So somebody here understood that and said, Lord, my heart is not haughty. Like clearly, Gael in that last scripture we was reading about in Judges, clearly his heart was haughty, puffed up, lifted up. That's what that means. He was lifted up. He ready to, you know, remove Abimelech. But he don't have the capacity to remove Abimelech. He wasn't even ready for that. So, but this is what he said here. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty, neither do I exercise myself in great matters, or in things too high for me. So as they say, hey, sometimes we need to just stay in our lane. Just stay in our lane. That's all Gael needed to do. He could have just stayed in his lane. And maybe one day he, he, he would have grew. He, maybe he would have been replaced Abimelech. Who knows? But, hey, he didn't do that. He said, look, oh, go ahead, verse 2. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself. 
There's a child that is weaned of his mother. See, and this is the way the Lord looking for humble because, hey, we, when it comes to being exalted, hey, the Bible tells you how to be exalted. It just say, humble yourself. Humble yourself. And this is what he's saying. He says, surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. Go ahead. My soul is even as a weaned child. My soul is even as a weaned child. And that's the mindset we all need to have. We need to have that mindset. That's why Jesus, and it's common, it's common nature. It's the flesh to have that other mindset where we want to leap forward and put ourselves forward. Even the disciples was on that. They got to talking to Jesus about who was the greatest. I guess they thought Jesus was going to co-sign one of them. They took it to Jesus. Jesus, tell them, tell them who the greatest, who the greatest in the kingdom. And Jesus knew they was getting puffed up. And he brought a little child and set them in the midst. He said, look, except you humble yourself and be as this child, you won't even get into the kingdom of heaven. You worried about being great. And that is the problem. And that's where a lot of secret whisperings and backbiting and all that kind of stuff will come from because people want to lift themselves up. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Go ahead. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. Because everything the Lord is dealing with, he's dealing with Israel. Galatians, Galatians 6. See, and it's good to remember, even if I know somebody got an issue, it's, it's good to remember your place. It's good for us to remember our place because just because somebody got an issue and they wrong in a matter don't mean that I should get puffed up and lift myself up against them or even go to the extreme of secretly whispering stuff to people and all of that. Notice what he tells you here. Even about how you should look at issues. Galatians 6 and verse 1. Galatians 6 and verse 1. Go ahead. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, yet which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Uh -huh. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So he's telling you how to handle even when there's Somebody got a problem. So somebody got a problem. It's not for me to magnify their problem. Really, we're supposed to be, especially we here trying to serve the Lord, we should be trying to help each other. So he said, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, if you really truly spiritual, operating in the spirit, it's your job to attempt to do what? Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, with some humility, considering thyself, lest thou also be, be tempted. Why well, he said, lest thou also be tempted? Because the very thing I find that people end up trying to point their finger at somebody else and put somebody down, they be caught up in the same thing. And, hey, the, and the people they were pointing at didn't even have to be doing nothing. That be what they call reaping what you sow. So that's why he said, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Because you just working up on a trial if you call yourself putting somebody down for what they doing. Even if they have done wrong. Especially you don't even know whether they did wrong or not. You just spreading something to be spreading like I said, and, and some people just assume stuff. Like Job's friends, they brought it to Job. They, was, they had that much gall or that much nerve to bring it to Job, but they had nothing to bring. 
But they brought it anyway. They said, Dude, we know you did something. They accused Job of something. Anything. You did something. They was really trying to get him to confess. Just admit to it, man. Just tell You did something. You robbed somebody. You, you, you slept with somebody. You did something. Because, see, that, this is the way. It don't happen no other way. All this bad stuff couldn't have happened to you, Job, unless you had done something wrong. So they was all the way out they leave. But the point is, even if Job had done something, that really wasn't your business. You came there to call yourself confident in him in this situation. You should have stuck to that. That's what you should have stuck to. Instead of trying to delve, delve into something out your league. So that's what it said. Brethren, <clears throat> if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Do what? Verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, mm -hmm. and so fulfill the law of Christ. Uh -huh. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So he said, bear one another burden. So that's the goal anyway. We, we shouldn't be trying to whisper and, and uh, put each other down bring each other down, we should be trying to help each other out of bad situations. Bear ye one another burden and fulfill the law of Christ. That's what Christ can to help us out of the worst situation. We was all dead in sin. But it's hard to do that if we get puffed up ourselves and we are thinking we are more than we are. It's hard to bear somebody's burden because it, it becomes all about us individually. So that would be a way to exalt ourselves on the back of somebody else's downfall. You try to exalt yourself. That means you, you know, you much greater. You see, look at them over there. They, he got caught up in that. But see, in so many words, you saying... You know, but I'm all right. He said, for if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth him on his own self. Why did, why did he say that on the heels of talking about somebody overtaking in a fault and all of that? Because that's when people show their true colors. Somebody else's downfall, they get puffed up and want to point the finger and, and whisper and all of that. But let's go further. Go to Acts 19. Acts. The 19th chapter. Acts 19. And this is a situation Paul found himself in. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Acts 19 and verse 23. I'm just going to, this is going to be an example on how rumors can fly. And people get on board with stuff and they don't even know what they're dealing with. Because it didn't went in the dark and it didn't went across the board and by the time they got all the way on the other end, hey, people don't even know. They upset about something. That's what he talked about murmuring. Israel got constantly caught up with murmuring when they was in the wilderness. They was in the wilderness. But they got that, you know, one from another. One person started, next thing you know, ten people upset. Ten people mad, they upset. Wasn't even upset till somebody else said, yeah, man, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's crazy. Next thing you know, everybody upset. So this is a situation here. And it's, it's about, they was preaching the word. That's what people disliked. And that's what Satan trying to disrupt. 19 and 23, Acts 19 and 23. Go ahead, read it. At the same time, there arose no small stir about that way. No small stir about that way. That way is talking about walking with the Lord. 
the way they was teaching people to serve the Lord, which was contrary to all the false worship going around. Go ahead. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, uh -huh. brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, uh -huh. and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. So this is all about, this is what it's about. He letting it out up front what it's about. It's about money. It's about wealth. This is what he's addressing these craftsmen about. So he's going to bring some other issues into play that they're going to use. But they bottom line right here, his bottom line is the money. Because they making big money off false worship, off false gods. Same way it is today. That's why people, that's why the people in charge don't want to let it go. Because hey, they didn't got rich and got power off of people worshiping false gods. But go ahead, 26. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Okay, so now he bring in the, the issue, which is that Paul is preaching people to get away from false worship, false God. It's just like we're doing. We're doing the same thing. Because people, and but people nowadays been taught that they can worship God any kind of way. They can deal with idolatry. That's why they deal with Christmas and Easter. Don't have absolutely, it has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus, but they deal with it anyway because they've been made to, yeah, it really don't matter. And they, they've been made to think that's really about Jesus. But then when you tell them it's not, it's not about Jesus, it has nothing to do with Jesus, well, you know, it, it don't matter, though. You know, we still just put Christ in. That's why they got this thing now, put Christ back in Christmas. That would work if he was ever in it. He was never in Christmas. So you can't put him back in it. But people think it's okay to do whatever in the name of God. Well, Paul was preaching against that. Like he said somewhere else, he got these people to turn away from idols to serve the living God, the ones that was doing it. But the rest of them, hey, they didn't want to turn. So they say, but, but he started off about the money. He said he called these people a like occupation and said, look, we've we, we been, we been getting rich off of these you know, making these false gods. Then he said, moreover, you see in here that at Ephesus, not alone at Ephesus, but all throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying they be no gods which are made with hands. So they, they, they got the culprit. The culprit is Paul. He the main culprit. And he getting people to turn away from false worship, but it's hurting their pocket. And that's where they affected at. And that's why it's a problem. If it wasn't hurting their pocket, we wouldn't even be talking. They wouldn't even be having this conversation. But that's the problem. Go ahead, 27. So that not only this, our craft is in danger. See, not only this, our, that's the real reason. That's why he lead, that's the lead story. Not only this, our craft is in danger, how we making all this money, but, but also we got to throw in the, the undertone, go ahead. To be said at naught. Uh -huh. But also that the temple of the great goddess Diana uh -huh. should be despised. See, and they, and, and they know, see, the people is caught up on this. People are caught up on feelings and emotions in their worship. So, and the ones in charge of all this lies and false worship, they know that. So they know how to stir the people up. They know what's going to get the people. You couldn't go, he couldn't go to the people and look like, you know, look, look, y'all, they, 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 they breaking us by having y'all not worship these false gods and try to do things different. They, he, didn't, he didn't go to them with that. He, he went to them with the great goddess Diana. See, because that's the, that's the tool that they're using. So he says, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and what? And her magnificence should be destroyed. And her magnificence should be destroyed. Go ahead. Whom all Asia and the world worship. And, uh -huh. Then what? And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath. Uh -huh. And cried out saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. See, that's what really got them upset. When they heard about Diana. But he doing it 
What he led in with was wealth, money. But they cried out, great is Diana of the Ephesians, verse 29. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And now the whole city is caught up. I'm just showing you how stuff was spread, too. When somebody got their own agenda. See, these people got their own agenda, and it's going to spread like wildfire because they want it to spread. And now the whole city is filled with confusion. Go ahead. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. Oh, man, they got these people so caught up on their feelings and their emotions. These people went grabbing people. They were like, that goes, what? that goes, some of them. He was with them, just like they kept saying to Peter that he was with Jesus. That's why Peter kept denying, because they was going to grab him too. He was like, nah, I don't know him. He kept denying. So they grabbed these brothers right off, because now they all caught up on their emotions. Because they didn't heard something, but they, don't even, they didn't really get the full message. The full message is about these people's money. Y'all messing with their money. So it said, they grabbed his, uh, Paul's companions in travel, and they did what? And in they travel, rushed, they rushed with mm -hmm. one accord into the theater. And they rushed with one accord into the theater. Now, they're going to jam these brothers up in the theater. And Paul is on the scene. He around. So what happened? 30. And when Paul would have entered into, in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. Now, Paul heard about it. He knew about it. He was going to go in the theater, and the disciples said, man, them people hype. You don't want to go in that theater, Paul. Don't go in that theater. But Paul wasn't scared, but he listened to reason because them people was on 10 just that quick. They was on 10. It just showed you how stuff spread, how little rumors and stuff were spread. These people on 10 just like that and don't even know why. I know they don't know why. Keep reading. 31. Mm -hmm. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. See, they tried to make sure Paul, they said, man, don't, don't go in that theater. Them people clowning. They on 10. Go ahead. Some therefore cried one thing. Now, this is what they're doing in the theater. Some therefore cried one thing. Go ahead. And some another. And some another. Go ahead. For the assembly was confused. For the assembly. He said that. The, the assembly is confused. And what? And the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And the majority of them didn't even know why they was out there. They don't even know why they out there. Somebody then whispered something. Somebody told me, you know, it's going down over there. Come on. And everybody jumping on board. Come on, man, we got to go to deal with this issue. What issue? What are you Come on, you're going to find out. And they all run into something to get involved in something. They don't even know what it is. And we know who incited it because we read the whole story. It's the one worried about their money. They worried about their pocket and got everybody hyped up about this goddess Diana. But then a lot of them don't even know that that's what it's about. They just get p people to go along in their simplicity, as they say. But go ahead. 33. Mm-hmm. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense upon th unto the people. Okay, but now, that's good, because once they found out he was speaking, they wouldn't even let him talk. Once they knew he was an a, a Israelite, they wouldn't even let him talk. Go ahead, we might as well read it now since we hit 34. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, <laughs> great is Diana of the Ephesians. Boy, you talking about being hyped up, being in your feelings and some emotionalism. They went two hours. They weren't even going to let him talk. You know how you just drown somebody? No, 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 I ain't listening. They went great as Diana of the Ephesians for two hours. And you could see the same thing nowadays because when you have to tell people and they're going to do the same thing, you have to tell people Mary is not God because Mary is just a, a substitute for Diana. The Lord, he, he ain't never told you to worship no goddess. So you can see the same thing going down when it get bad 
and people, you know, people that been worshiping Mary, the so-called mother of God, get wind of it and stop worshiping. You can see some people getting upset doing the exact same thing. The people that's making money going to be upset. People that's in power going to be upset. And they're going to have the rest of the people that's really believing in the stuff on 10. They're going to have them on 10. Same difference. But now let's go further. Go to uh, 2 Samuel 16. Look at the Old Testament example. 2 Samuel 16. We read this recently, probably from another standpoint. Second Samuel 16. Second Samuel 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5, 16 and 5. Go ahead, read it. And when King David came to Behurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, uh -huh. whose name was Shimei. Now, it's good to note that it's telling you where this guy come from. This guy, Shimei, he's of the house of Saul. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. He's a relative of Saul. Because that's where Saul was from, the tribe of Benjamin. That's what Paul in the New Testament, he was named after. His name was really Saul. And he was from the tribe of Benjamin. So, hey, he got the name of the first king of Israel, Saul. But Saul right here, he's dead and gone. But some of his family, they still have a grudge against David. For no good reason. Except back when Saul was living, a whole bunch of rumors and secrets and stuff was swirling and flying around about David. That's why I tell you, hey, you have to be careful listening to somebody whispering secrets to you. Because you start running with that and then you be operating on something, you know, on the wrong terms. You be operating on the wrong thing and then he got in trouble like this guy. He operating on the wrong thing. And he wasn't ashamed. I mean, he wasn't ashamed. He really believed it in his heart that he right and that something is wrong with this guy here, David. So he, he was bold enough to take it out there to David. But he got bad intel. He got bad information and then had this bad information a long time because Saul is now dead. But he's still holding a grudge against David for what he didn't heard. That's why I, I say it's important to understand where he's coming from. This is where he's coming from. It said, when King David came to Behurim, behold, there came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei. Go ahead. The son of Gera. Uh -huh. What'd he do? He came forth and cursed still as he came. He come out cursing. He on 10. He come out cursing. He come out cursing still as he came. See, David, this was a low point in his life because, hey, Absalom had overthrown things and he is on the run. So this guy figured, hey, this is my opportunity now. David on the run. But he really feel that he right. That he got calls come out there to curse David. What'd he say? Go ahead, verse uh, 6. What'd he do? And he cast stones at David uh -huh. and at all the servants of King David. Now he out there all by himself. This how much on 10 he on. He all by himself. Don't really have a leg to stand on against David. He know they were, but he think, hey, hey, this is my chance because now you meeting your downfall for what you did to my relatives. You mean your downfall. He cast stone at David and all the servants of King David and all, go ahead. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Seven. And thus says Shimei when he cursed, come out, come out thou bloody man and thou man of Belial. See David kind of in the center and he telling David, you come out. 
He cursed. Come out, come out, thou bloody man, thou man of Belial. He's snapping on David, and he wrong. He wrong, but he believe he right. But why is he believing that? Why is he caught up on it? Because some stuff then floated around for years. It done floated around from years. Saul was the king, so you know people going to give him some credibility. You know, if Saul's saying that he the king, and the Lord made him king. So you know people automatically going to give him the benefit of the doubt. They're going to give him some credibility, but he was wrong. So now, but he didn't, he didn't let, he didn't put stuff out there about David, put it out there, put it out there, and everybody believed in the stuff he didn't put out there. Everybody believe in the hype. That lets you know, hey, secrets was swirling because he come throwing these accusations like they real lie. Come out, you bloody man. You man of Belial. What did he do? What did he say David did? Verse 8. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, uh -huh. in whose stead thou hast reigned. He said, the Lord hath returned upon thee the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. Well, that was right. I mean, David did take over and rule from Saul, but the Lord made that happen. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't David's fault. But the thing that he's thinking is that David just was against Saul and took the kingdom from Saul. No, Saul was against David and the Lord took the kingdom from Saul and gave it to David. But Saul was against David. Saul was trying to kill David because he was jealous of him. But he thinking it's the other way around because that's what the rumor said. Of course, you know, if you tell the story... And you don't want to be right with it. You don't want to put yourself in a bad light. Hey, you're going to make it look like you're right. So everybody from the tribe of Benjamin, they, hey, they didn't heard this. And unless they was had, if we say, a mind of their own to think for themselves and just go with what's right, hey, they was, they was believing this hype. They was believing the, the rumors and the secrets that was being whispered out there. He said, the Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. Go ahead. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. Uh-huh. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. He said, you a bloody man, and the Lord getting you back for what you did. But he hadn't done nothing. He hadn't done nothing to Saul. Matter of fact, he had occasion to kill Saul. He refused to touch Saul. When he had men telling him, look, go on, take him out, because Saul was trying to kill him. But he hadn't touched Saul. He's running from Saul to keep from killing him. And that's something else. And that's why it's good to have the right information before you go out cursing and screaming and hollering at somebody. You don't need to do that either way, really. And that shows you you don't want to get out your lane, because if you... If you're prone to do that, then that means you probably go go on some bad intel in the first place. Like this guy. He going on some bad intel that he'd heard about. And he obviously he believed. This is what I'm trying to tell you. He believed he right. He ain't went out there knowing that I've just been believing a lie. No, he think he right. He go out there raising the and he think David, he think the Lord is done with David. This guy really think he know the Lord. He trying to come from a righteous standpoint. That's what he trying to do. Now the Lord getting you back. Finally getting you back for what you did. Look, you've been listening to them secret whisperers. But that's not, that don't mean it was right. Go ahead, what verse you at? Verse 9? Verse 9. Read it. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, uh -huh. unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Uh -huh. Nah, you know, he, he called himself mad at David because what he did to Saul, even if he, David had done something, that's over with. David the king, now look at what you're doing. And that's why, hey, some of David's boys, Abishai said, Why should we let this dead dog curse the king? Go ahead. Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. Uh-huh. And the king said, 
What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? Uh -huh. So let him curse, because the Lord have said unto him, Curse David. That shows you that David was humble. He was humble. He wasn't even guilty of what the guy saying or none of that. And he just said, hey, let him go on curse. Because he knew, like, sometimes that's what you should say to yourself. Well, hey, maybe I didn't do what they saying I did, but I know I didn't did something. So, hey, hey the Lord allowing it, i take that for the team. i take that one. And that's the way David was looking at it. Hey, i just take that one. Because surely the guy was out of pocket for cursing him. But that go to show you when you're going on what you didn't heard, you will go fly off the handle for no reason. That's why it's not good to fly off the handle, period. So he said, what I have to use to you sons of Zerah, so let him curse because the Lord have said unto him, curse David. Who shall say, wherefore hast thou done so? Verse 11. And David said unto Abishai and to all his servants, uh -huh. Behold, my son which came forth of my bowels seeketh my life. Uh -huh. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Mm -hmm. Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. Go ahead. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. See, that's somebody that's trusting in the Lord. And that's all we got to do is trust in the Lord. That's why you ain't got to get caught up in the secrets and the whisperings and all of that. All you got to do is trust in the Lord. Go ahead. 13. Mm -hmm. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went mm -hmm. and threw stones at him and cast dust. Threw stones and he, he raising a rucket. He kicking dirt and throwing stones and everything and really don't have a leg to stand on. But he really, truly believed the hype. He believed the little secrets that was got spread out about David that were not true. Go ahead. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves there. Okay. Uh, Job 19. This is what I mentioned earlier. Job, the 19th chapter. And we're going to wrap it up. Job 19. <clears throat> I had a lot more put, it, put in this lesson, but I did cut it. I'm glad I did because we would have been there till 11 o'clock. Job 19. <clears throat> and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Job 19 and verse 1. See, and, and the point is, brothers and sisters, exhibit A with this guy Shimei, he ain't seen nothing. He hasn't seen David do anything. It's all what he heard. He didn't see David do nothing. And David hadn't done nothing to Saul. The book show you that David was innocent in the matter with Saul. Even when he had the opportunity to kill Saul on multiple occasions, the Lord knocked Saul out, had Saul sleep. David still wouldn't lean on his own understanding. You're like, look, I'm going to let the Lord handle that. That shows you his faith in the Lord. So the moral of the story is, even if David was wrong, you ain't seen it. So just leave it alone. Let the Lord handle it. That's what you should do. And this is what Job told these guys right here. And that will keep you from getting running off half-cocked on matters that you don't even have a clue about. Because somebody whispered and told, yeah, you know, so-and-so do this. They on this. 19 and 1, read it. Then Job answered and said, how long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? See, now this was Job talking to, this to his three friends. Because they came to comfort him and they all out accused him. That's why the Lord made them make an offering to Job in the end. So Job said, how long will you vex my soul? And break me in pieces. How? Not with no hammer, no axe, not with no sword. He said, break me in pieces with words. See, that, that show you really, words do a lot of damage. You know, we try to teach kids not to get caught up on words. You say, words won't hurt you. Words will hurt you. 
Because we said sticks and stones may break my bones, but that's not absolutely true. He said, you break me in pieces with words. Verse 3. These ten times have you reproached me. These ten times. See, and they use ten, kind of like we would say, you know, a hundred times or a thousand. We might say ten too. Just figure, a figure of speech just to mean repeatedly. Don't mean he counted to ten really. It just means, look, how many times I got to tell you? I have told you that ten times. Don't mean I actually counted one, two, three, four, five. No, it just means I have told you that whole, a whole bunch. So he said, these ten times have ye reproached me. Go ahead. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. Go ahead. And be it indeed that I have erred, my error remaineth with myself. See, and that's something to keep in mind. He said, and be it indeed that I have erred, if I have erred, which he hadn't, by the way. What they was on, they didn't have a clue. You know how, you know how we know he didn't err. The Lord called Job a perfect and upright man. He told Satan that. He hadn't erred. That's what... Wasn't why all this stuff happened. But the thing is, he said, even if I have air, you don't know nothing about it. You're swinging in the wind. you guessing at stuff. That's why it's not good to be repeating stuff you have heard from somebody else. Because if, even if they wrong, you don't know one way or another. And he's showing you here, it's best to leave that alone, being that you don't know. Hey, leave it where it is, because if the Lord want to address it and want to blow it out, it's going to be blowed out anyway. That's what he said. What's done in the dark going to come to the light anyway. So all you got to do is wait on it. If that's what needs to happen, hey, the Lord will address that that way. You don't need to be trying to address it, spreading stuff about somebody because you heard it. Even if they have air, according to what he read that again, verse 4. And be it indeed that I have air, uh -huh. my error remain, remaineth with myself. He said, be it indeed that I have air, my error remaineth with myself. In other words, hey, you don't know, you ain't seen it. You don't know nothing about it. So you should be careful because perhaps you bear false witness, which is really what they was doing. You should be real careful of that. Move on. Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20. One verse. 19. 20 and 19. Proverbs 20 and verse 19. Read that one verse. Go ahead. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Mm -hmm. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. See, he said it. He said, he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. He said, so don't get caught up. Don't, don't, don't get caught in that trick bag. Therefore, meddle not with him that flatter with his lips. Because they're going to look like they're on your side telling you secrets about somebody else. Well, you know they're going to do that with somebody else. And don't even mean it's true. Don't even mean it's true. But like Job just told us, even if it was true, hey, leave it, leave it where it is because it's not doing no good. But this is the secret whisperer. And that's why he said, he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Something that don't nobody know, they got a juicy secret. And it just spread like wildfire, and don't nobody know what's true or what's false about it. They just keep spreading it. That's why we don't want to get caught up in that. He that goes about as a terror bear reveal of secrets, therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Because they be, look like they with you, until they with somebody else, they're going to be trying to tell them something about you. 
One more place, Proverbs 11. Because he show you, he show you how, to, how to handle things. Proverbs 11 and verse 9, read it. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. See, see he, called, he called him a hypocrite. He said a hypocrite with his mouth. That's all. That's all we're talking about. How you can destroy somebody with your mouth. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. Destroy his neighbor. Don't even think nothing of it either. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. See, and that's the same thing. <clears throat> and somebody else come along with some knowledge. Like I said, I've heard people say stuff about somebody else, but they said it to the wrong person. They told me, I'd be like, no, that's not true. You can stop that. You can stop that rumor right here. That is not true. And then they still don't stop it, though. If they've been on that, they're going to run and tell somebody else. That's like I said, brother told me something about. And I told him, I said, no, that ain't true. He told me the same thing a few weeks later. He, he forgot he told me. And I told him again. I said, I just told you that wasn't true. So he said, look, <clears throat> an hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. See, and that, that be the thing, people operating in secret and in the dark saying that, and, and, and people, some people don't have the real knowledge of it, but the Lord still will put it out there. Like David, hey, David hadn't done nothing to Saul. And that became evident as time went on to the one that called himself coming out there cursing him. But go ahead, last verse, verse 13. Read that. A talebearer revealeth secrets. A tale, there you go again. A talebearer revealeth secrets. That's why the title is the secret whisperer. We whisper. That. That's how you reveal secrets too. They ain't blowing it on the loudspeaker. They want to whisper it. Whisper it around. I done had a lot of stuff whispered about me. It probably would bother me if it was true. But hey, when you know people just swinging in the wind, you don't even worry about that. And if it's true, if it's something true, then you know you just got some work to do. That's what you worry about. If it's something true that's wrong, that somebody is spreading. But he said, a tale bearer revealeth secrets, but on the flip side, what? And this is it. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Because that's the best approach when you don't even know what the heck is going on. Lest you be spreading a lie. And even if it's true, you could be creating some damage unnecessarily. Getting out of your league. So that's the best course of action either way. That's why the Bible is telling you that. A Tell, bear, reveal, and seek, but he that is of a faithful matter, faithful spirit, conceal it the matter. That means they know how to keep their mouth shut and worry about serving God themselves. Hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your DVDs and CDs up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other study classes, Question and Answer Bible Study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central via conference call line 860-970-0010 ID number 343-531-334. Also stream live from, from via our website, thykingdomcome7.com. Children's Bible class, ages 4 through 12, every Sabbath at 12 noon. Teen Forum Bible class, ages 13 through 19, every other Sabbath, Saturday at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium and or speak with Brother Levi. Following is the dress code. For our services, 
All clothing should be modest in appearance. Nothing tight-fitting, overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head coverings. No shorts, and women should wear a head covering such as a hat or scarf according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. <coughs> if your child becomes noisy during the lesson and distracting other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitor area in the rear of the class. <coughs> Any tithes and or free will offerings should be put in an offering envelope and placed in an offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you until next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. All right. Other than that, uh, we got the feast coming up. Trump is in a couple of weeks on the uh, really just week and a half, right? Yeah. Uh, so a week from Monday, this coming Monday, we'll be celebrating the trumpets. Then after that, we know the atonement, then the tabernacles. So if you're not off for those days, make sure you be off for those days. And uh, we're going to get it in. Other than that, I mentioned, you know, people that remind those that need prayer to pray for them. We're going to probably had a monthly fast. I think it's coming up next week. We announced that. And um, other than that, I was in Indianapolis last Saturday. It was good. They say, everybody say I hadn't been to everywhere I go. They say, you ain't been in two years. I'm like, nah, it ain't been that long. So, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed keeping the Sabbath with them down in Indianapolis. And uh, glad to be back. Other than that, with that said, if nothing else, we're going to face the rules and we'll close out. Our Father, Our Father which, art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. These things we pray in Jesus' name. And we pray in Jesus' name. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. And King of Kings. And King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name.